Right guys, here at TPI, I've got my Titleist MB7 iron. A common question I get asked when I review clubs is what club, or, or there's a, this kind of perception that some clubs are easier to shape or harder to shape than others. We're gonna have a little play with that. We're gonna have a little test. We've got the boys who are gonna help me with some numbers. We've got plenty of equipment. We're gonna try my blade. I'm gonna try and shape shots. I'm gonna control how much kind of tilt axis on the ball. So think of that as curvature that I put on. And then we'll do some tests with some other clubs to see if any are easier or harder to shape. Because it's definitely something people comment on my videos. You know, that, that's all good with that club, but can you shape it? As in game improvements, make it harder to shape, kind of always go straight ideas. Let's challenge it. Right, I'm gonna hit some shots. I'm gonna try and draw the ball to a target and I'm gonna try and tilt the spin axis of the ball around 10 degrees. We'll, we'll explain what uh, uh, spin axis tilt means as we go on but think of it as curvature so how much I'm moving the ball in the air how much I'm shaping it right so seven iron guys this is my MB and I'm gonna go for around 7 to 12 draw curve so I reckon that's closer to 7 than it is to 12 that's a gentle draw Nine. Yeah, there we go. So that's nine degrees worth of curvature. That's correct. Not bad, eh? Nope. Call your shot. <laughs> yeah. Let's just do another draw. Again, I'm going to keep it around the 10 ish. Eleven. Six point six. Really? Definitely started further left, didn't further it? Further left. So 6.6. .6. I mean, with tilt axis on a shot, I'm going to give myself around a five degree buffer, and I would still maybe call that relatively controlled. Yeah, it's going the direction you want. Yeah. Maybe a little more, a little less, but you know, part of it's controlling the curve and part of it's controlling the end result. So yeah. We want to make sure, let's say you're starting right edge of green, it's coming back to center, that sort of thing. And if you can hit your curves within five degrees, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we're gonna go same club, same ball. I'm now gonna try and curve it left to right. Mm -hmm. Again, should we go around 10 degrees worth of curvature? So basically, if I can tilt the axis the ball is spinning on, so control how much that's gonna curve in the air, basically. Think of the skills that gives me uh, around obstacles, trees, things like that, drawing it into pins, fading it into pins. Think about winds as well, holding it up, drawing it with winds. That allows me to pick what club I can play. So it allows me to be a better golfer. But if the equipment affects how much control I have over that, in theory, I'm gonna be worse, aren't I? Right, 10 degrees worth of cuts been definitely my less preferred shape at the moment with loft. So I reckon that's close to on the money. Certainly target bound. 8.6. Yeah, it's 8 points, so I'm taking that. Absolutely. So I would argue with this club, I'm gonna do one more cut. Controlling left to right and right to left curvature is relatively easy to do and gameable. That's not far off the same, I'm guessing. 9.4. Yeah. It's the last one, 9.4, when trying to hit 10 degrees. So should we change the club and see if that becomes easier or harder? Because there's certainly people out there who believe, and it might be true, I, I haven't done this test for years, um, so clubs change, that you'll give me a certain club where it's just made to go straight, is there, I believe, because it's cavity back and game improvement. Higher MOI yeah. means more forgiveness on off-center hits. The theory is, well, I lose workability. But if you can control the club face and control the club path, then you still have workable clubs. But that's where we want to test and find out how it works for you. Right, so we're at the other end of the spectrum now. You're holding an AP1, same shaft, I think? Same shaft, our most forgiving iron. Uh, loft is stronger, we're at two degrees flat. So we try to neutralize all the variables we can to see the difference in workability in the difference in chassis of iron. All right, so uh, 10 degrees right to left. 10 degrees, right, calling. Cool. <laughs> 10 degrees draw, AP1, so we've got chunky, more offset. In theory, you're doing stuff to counter ideas. 
but will my skill set override it? That, I reckon we're nearer the 6th than the 10 maybe, but not sure. 3.3 so that's definitely less shaped but was that me or the club I definitely feel first shot with a different club me so that's I mean that's shaping as much as the others in my opinion 6.3 yeah so that's back to let's do one more then so I felt like I found So there you go, the back, that's the oval one which I did with that as well. Thirteen. Yeah. So in my head, so let's hear your opinion. If that isn't as tight on dispersion, and we can check because the numbers jumped around, I found a middle one. Mm -hmm. That's me looking at a different club, working out a different feel, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Like you give me five minutes, come back, I'll have that nailed in. You've got to remember I've done it with a blade for. 20 what, plus years, years so i'm just like there right I what do you think yeah well we saw we definitely saw the direction stayed right to left yeah so we had three degrees six degrees 11 degrees right to left so you could control the shape it might have been moderated slightly that especially comes in on a more forgiving club when you, if you hit it on the heel or toe you definitely get straighter shots there but you hit dead center you're still going to control distance or direction by face angle and path but surely the heel and toe that you say that are straighter that's only going to be if it's heel and toe and then you produce identical numbers. Right. So if As in if I'm four across face five open to a path and I hit it out of the heel. The, the toe might reduce some of the yeah. fade, but it is not going to eliminate it. Yeah. The, yeah. the golfer still has the number one vote yeah. by controlling face. Yeah. Um, but you want the ability to go around, like you said, go around obstacles. So we want to make sure that every club you have, you, you retain that. And so far you have. Uh, I'm interested to see the left to right and see how that plays out with the AP1 as well. So AP1, what, you want another 10 left to right now? Yes. So in theory, lots of people would, I guess, argue that the offset might make that harder as well. Mm -hmm. Am I okay here, or do you want me to go further Nope, back? you're good right where you are. Just there. Sixes, maybe eight, six and eight. Eight point eight. Yeah. It's a kind of on my number, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I don't care that the offset's there. I still see a flat face. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like that's not making me feel like I can't make that face still open to a path. The fact that it's further back like that. Yeah. There is an element of the more offset, it changes the dynamic face closure, but with an iron we're talking small differences. Yeah. Um, so we're still going to see face closure on all irons, but a little bit more on an AP1. So there should be a trend to the left uh, for a right-handed golfer, but not overriding face angle and path. What's interesting on that for me is I know a fade, if it's going to be functional, it needs to start up the left. So the fact that that face might be more left as long as my path is left, it doesn't bother me. Right. Because I don't want my face to be zero. I want it actually, this one to spin them out. I want it too closed. Or if I'm going to spin exit 10 degrees or 8 degrees, I probably want that face two to three shut to zero with path then going further left than that. So I actually don't see offset as a problem with a fade because I, in some ways I see it kind of helping me in a funny way. Right, I'll do one more again. We'll go around eight, six to ten degrees curvature to the right. Mm -hmm. Or left to right. I mean, it's a functional fade, isn't it? Yep. Maybe a little thin. It was thin, so I, then again, the curvature's going to be jumped because of strike. But two. It, two, yeah. And that translated to maybe 15 feet of curvature in the air. Yeah. It started just left of the white flag and, and ended right of it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting though, isn't it, that that's got maybe one more. That 
looked like more of a uh, push fade than a... Yeah, it didn't a, start as left, did it? But it had more curve. Is that nearer the 10s? 15.5. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, my left to right is always going to be the the less accurate number I hit if you give me enough goes <coughs> with where I feel my swing is at the minute. You've got a little challenge before we round up the data. What were we saying there, Brett? Well, I'd like to see your extreme. So if you're going around an object like a tree, yeah. you're, you're really concerned about moving at large distances. So we've have you start on one flag and then move it towards another as if that's the target that really encompasses like uh, 20 yards of movement in the air. So let's see how it goes. So we want to go around the red flag to the white ended at the white any club or shall i choose this is a hard enough one that you should choose okay <laughs> so i would actually what do you choose? Yeah, i would choose this okay. because and this goes back to my kind of original feeling with these because this is probably going to launch maybe higher okay. maybe peak height a little higher but i'm not sure about stronger that stronger lofted yeah be easier to exactly in throw. theory with a stronger loft d plane is going to work to my favor here so this is basically a six iron to that seven iron mm -hmm. and if i wanted to curve it massively left to right as long as you don't go past the loft i'm gonna yep. go straight a face yeah i ain't gonna be able to do that shot with a wedge am right. i not, not a chance which I, then kind of contradicts the idea that this is less movable doesn't it almost <laughs> But I am not going to be able to do it. I wish you said it was the other way. I probably could do that one. What's well, next? Right? I hope there's no houses up the left. So you're clear. <laughs> I used to really enjoy doing this, but this is not comfy. Oh, That's very good. Not a bad effort, is it? I'm not sure if I got round the Goodness. first tree, but I was, I probably flicked no, it, but you, I was close. You check the box, that's, that's <laughs> well done. So we didn't get the curvature number on that, but often that happens with the launch monitors when you push them a bit to the extreme. And I'm going way across where it's aimed and stuff And like I think that. you were a little outside the box. Okay. Well. well, let's have a look at some of the figures. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, for instance, out of them, what did anything happen to my distance from right to left to left to right? Because I would always feel that my cuts are shorter. Mm-hmm. Whenever you, obviously the AP1 relative to the muscle back is going to go a little further. Yeah. Bigger chassis, stronger loft. So you had about a 14 yard carry difference between the two on the draws. But from an AP1 draw to an AP1 fade, again, you were 168 in carry on the draw. You were 151 carry on the fade. Yeah. So you lost some distance there. Uh, we are playing into the wind, so that draw is going to go a little further, yeah. and that fade is going to get hung up just a little bit more. But um, overall, pretty good. So really, for me, on those two, I would say, if you take it to extremes, I would say the more cavity back club for me with the stronger loft is helping me shape it more, not less. You can, sh you can certainly shape it. I yeah. mean, we saw that move more distance than any other shot you hit yeah yeah with an ap1 i think it comes down to you hit the center fairly frequently yeah so that negates some of the chassis difference yeah and and you control face and path so i think that's where people are getting mixed up it's almost two different questions isn't it mm -hmm. so you know does it help me hit it straighter if you're hitting it all across the face it might help to a certain degree it just will. pull it in a fraction mm -hmm. But if we're talking actually your skill set, which is where I think the conversation gets confused between those two questions. So I get a common question in reviews is, oh, you didn't show dispersion numbers. And I always think people are showing dispersion numbers. I mean, surely that's me. Face one or two open to the path is all me, as I think that kind of shows. Right. The only time I would show dispersion, which we talked about earlier, is on the short and long more than the left and the right, because if you get a lower spinning, flyable, those kind of things. I think coming down to intent as well. Yeah. You know, intent is gonna be a portion of it where a player might not intend to hit it straight, but their golf swing doesn't allow them to do that. So that club might actually help them hit a little bit straighter. Yeah. Whereas a player skill set, normally they hit it straight already and then they intend to shape it. They probably can get more out of every club. How much were you fit? Were you guys are fitting constantly and what have you? How much are you fitting around left and right miss more than short and long? Does that make sense? As in, if you've got someone missing left and right, there's a big part of you Apart from maybe with the drivers where you can start because the CG is so off the face and you can manipulate left and rights a bit more with the iron, left and right misses, you're kind of 
putting that down to the student to a certain degree are you not or not what do you think for me it's always north and south yeah uh, north that's and the most important piece if you can't control the distance the curvature doesn't matter as much curvature comes second so no matter what you do to the club you can always as brett said you have the last say on what that golf ball does or doesn't do but if you can't control the distance then it, it's all yeah it's all relative players ability will be the largest determination of direction yeah uh, the club can help but again the player cast the final vote interesting guys i mean i've done this test before it was interesting to do it now with even the club as sort of they move on obviously this i probably did this five six years ago because it was upsetting me i had people coming for custom fits and they wanted to talk about left and right and I would see club face variations from two closed to a path and then two shots later, four open to a path. And I just think, well, unless you've got a club that's spinning head, I mean, I can't control that, that's you. And when I do reviews and people ask me to talk about dispersion, let's be clear, for me, dispersion is so much more about short and long. Why do you think I use bladed clubs? I'm not the world's best striker. I just want consistent spin numbers. That's why I'm using for the short and long misses. Um, you're going to determine left and rights more than anything else. But interesting points there on the miss hits, how it might just bring you in if you've got that kind of bigger club head. Post comments down below. Let me know what you think. Is it something you've tried or not? You should definitely try this when you do your fitting. If you've got the ability to shape shots, when I'm testing drivers for myself, I'm going to hit every shot I play because I want to know if that setting allows me to hit my draw when I need to, hit my fade when I need to, hit a high one, hit a low one. You need to be testing this way as well which is why it's important you do this on ranges but maybe get out on the course and try them as well